Welcome to Psychology Concepts Explained, and this is your host, Dr. C, professor of psychology for over 20 years and teaching only online classes for over 10 years. I hope you enjoy this podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Photosynthesis, and that's all I'm going to say about that. In this podcast, I want to discuss the term empirical evidence as it relates to psychology. And that is because psychology is a science. Yeah, you're surprised, right? The content of every psychology textbook is made up of scientific research or empirical evidence. That's the term of the day. The research methods described in the early chapters of an intro and lifespan textbook are based on empirical methods. Surveys, observation, experiments, correlational studies, these are also called objective measurements. So it's really important to distinguish the difference between subjective information versus objective information. Maybe someone shared an article with you through social media, and let's say it's from Psychology Today in the magazine, about the best way to discipline your child. So while you're reading that article, how do you filter information that you're reading? Just by whether or not the source is trustworthy? Is that enough? Shouldn't we be asking whether or not the advice in that article is based on empirical evidence? or just someone's subjective experience or opinion. That should be one of our mental filters when we absorb information that matters to us. Your psychology textbook contains hundreds of references. You know, those pages you ignore that are in the back of the book. And your authors are trying to summarize fields of research into a narrative or a story that makes sense. So, you're reading a second-hand summarization of research studies shaped into segments and chapters and modules. So, reading a textbook is not actually reading the original first-hand research. It's kind of like listening to a news reporter talking about the latest research about some treatment. And you're not actually hearing it from the original source or the actual researcher who may need an hour or two to explain what the research research results mean. So these graduate degree professionals, master's degrees, PhDs, MDs, they are experts in their field because they've studied or even published some of those original articles. They know that information at a much deeper level than your textbook authors, who likely did not read every single original scientific article referenced in the textbook. So, if you find a particular piece of research in your book interesting, I challenge you to try to locate the original scientific article that's in a scientific journal. Hopefully it's not in a journal behind a paywall online, and the reason for that is because usually scientific journal articles are not publicly available, or freely available, but they're designed to be read and used by other researchers who are trying to build upon existing research. So, how would you find an article? Locate the short-term reference within the chapter, maybe at the end of a sentence. For example, Williamson, 2017. I'm making that up. Then go to the end of the book in the long list of references and look for Williamson. Hopefully there's only one of them. And you'll see a long-form reference. And you use the information in that long-form reference to look up the actual article. All right, to make a long story short, the psychology course you're taking, the textbook that you're reading, is a long list of empirical research studies summarized by your textbook authors. And the research is based on empirical methods. So it's not a book of opinions, all right? That's a very important distinction. It does not mean that all of the research or research is 100% true all the time, newer research might debunk older research, and that's why textbook editions have to be made in terms of making newer editions. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for listening. This is Dr. C, and I'll talk to you soon.
If you enjoyed this podcast, please follow me on anchor.fm slash jackbteaching. That's Jack, the letter B, and the word teaching. And you can reach me on Twitter. My handle is also at jackbteaching. Thank you.